Hello there, thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel for Avellan Electronics. Today I want to talk about an aspect of the DRB8811 bipolar stepper micro stepping driver and uh, in particular that would be the decay input. I got a lot of questions asking uh, what to do with it, what does it mean, what does it do and at the same time I get some other questions about hey my stepper is too noisy how do I solve this problem well uh, both both set of questions are intertwined one will solve the other so decay is a very important matter uh, to master and today I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why here is my latest stepper driver uh, stepper driver board with the DRB8811 is called AE MDL Stepper 8811 and uh, I have been getting a lot of traction with this board a lot of people are liking it because it has an improved heat sinking and that allows you to drive up to 2.5 amps and that is the, the bare maximum that this drive can do and without, without this kind of implementation it's pretty much impossible to go there but thanks to, uh, to uh, some uh, techniques that I have employed which are documented on the website now you can reach uh, your 2.5 amps but those 2.5 amps are useless if you're not doing it right and uh, driving the, the decay pin correctly will help you to get better better performance out of your motor Spe specific, specifically if you're doing micro stepping because as it turns out and you must know this by now we're regulating current which means that we're enabling we're disabling the edge bridge continuously to try to maintain a current level and then by changing to an X current level and subsequently we can generate a sine wave well as it turns out uh, the sine wave is pretty much divided in four quadrants I like to call them quadrant 1, 2, 3 and 4 and each one of those quadrants behaves differently in terms of how easy it is to control the current uh, for example, as you can see on my uh, little drawing here on quadrants 1 and 3, you are charging the current. That means that the current is increasing in the winding. But in quadrants 2 and 4, the current is decreasing in the winding. Now, it may seem like a trivial endeavor, but as it turns out, it is completely relevant whether we are increasing the current or decreasing the current because the inductance is going to help us in one instance better than the other uh, so what we do is that we use a slow decay mode while we are going up well, the current is increasing but when the current is decreasing as in quadrants 2 and 4 we cannot use slow decay uh, I'm going to show you later what happens if you use slow decay and you'll see what happens to the sine wave but pretty much we're going to have to use either fast or mix now which one to use uh, I'm thinking that mix is obviously the most efficient and the beauty about uh, the DRV8811 is that it has an analog input called DK which allows you to have a, a pretty good range of different uh, mixed decay rates now mixed decay means that you're a percentage of the time you're on slow a percentage of the time you're on fast so it is like a variable resistance when it comes to um, uh, decreasing the current now let's take a look on the scope to see what happens. All right, now we are looking at uh, DK, that's uh, channel two, and the winding current. So DK is low, which means that we're doing fast DK, and it's very simple to see. Look at, uh, let's zoom here. Uh, you can see how the current is changing so much. That pretty much tells me that we're on fast decay. If we were on slow decay, as I'm seeing on quadrant one, uh, it will, it will, the, the change on the current will be less, uh, will be very small. So let's go back to our sine wave. As a refresher, remember that if I am going up, this is quadrant one. If I am going down, that is quadrant two. And in here, although it looks like I am going down, this is quadrant three, and actually I'm charging. It's just that I'm changing charging in the opposing direction now this is quadrant 4 so as you can see quadrant 2 and quadrant 4 are on fast DK I'm gonna I'm gonna go and change uh, DK so that well, we can do slow DK on quadrants 2 and 4 
increasing decay. Notice that quadrant two and four are changing now. And that is slow decay. How do I know that slow decay? Well, I'm getting this deformation here. Like I said before, it is easier to charge the inductor than it is to discharge it. <clears throat> so slow decay uh, fails to to give us the eight degrees, the eight current levels, because as it was easy for the H bridge to charge the inductor by pushing current to discharge it and go into the same current levels is not as easy. On fast decay, however, because the current is, is going uh, is discharging so quick, it will be easier to get to those current levels. But you saw all the chopping was so big, the ripple was so big. Why? Because we were on fast decay. That's where mixed decay comes in to to give us an in between. Fast decay is too fast, slow decay is too slow. But mixed decay gives us an in between. So let's take a look at what happens when I when I decrease decay to somewhere so that I am not either on fast or slow. Ah, that is that is beautiful. Now notice that I have analog control so if I go too low I'm I am too fast too much fast decay and here you know I'm thinking this is a good one here okay now this doesn't mean that you're gonna get 100% perfect uh, you could uh, ar always argue that you know this doesn't look as in here this goes very fast this takes some time it's better than slow or fast and it basically makes your uh, your micro stepping cleaner and your current control cleaner as well now if we listen to the motor let me put the motor close to the camera so you, you can you can listen to what it is doing because audible noise is something that we don't like And I get a lot of questions asking uh, that, that, that noise that my motor is making, how do I get rid of it? Okay, right now the, the motor is pretty silent. That's because I tuned my DK to a good, to a good value. Now if I make it uh, slow, let me take it slow. Okay, run direction, there is slow. It's a little bit, a little bit uh, noisier. Not a lot, but a little bit. So in terms of audible noise, uh, this this can work. Now if I go to fast decay, that's where you can start hearing it. So I think you can hear. I, I, I'm actually hearing this. If you cannot hear on the video, that must be because the uh, the noise is not uh, enough. But I can assure you. That is audible noise, and of course that makes sense because when you look at the frequency here, this frequency is most likely going to be below 20 kilohertz. So there is a component, plus the ripple is so big that it's, it's going to be a, a fairly strong strong signal. Uh, clearly not, uh, not the one that we want to use. So if you're getting audible noise on your stepper, high pitch squealing that you, that you want to get rid of, uh, just in your decay to something that is uh, not either not too fast and of course not slow there's where we have it okay well that was uh, DK uh, controlling DK and uh, a few other uh, little tricks on, on a stepper that you can do with your DRB8811 and your uh, AEMDL stepper 8811 module uh, if you have any questions remember you can reach me at uh, on my website at avianelectronics.com or uh, on my forum robot talk or uh, on my uh, blog at robot.avianics.com all right thank you for tuning and hopefully you're gonna have a cool uh, stepper projects coming up